Hey guys, what's up? It's Sunny, and yes, you read the title of this video correctly. Today, I'm going to be sharing you the story time of how a follower of my social media broke into my house and tried to burn it down. <laughs> this is not like a Tana Mojo Gabby Hanna clickbait. This is something that actually happened uh, early last year and I feel like enough time has passed where I can talk about it on social media. The bad blood is no longer bad. Or well, I just feel like I want to tell this story because I feel like I am someone who has always had online friends and has always made friends online and it's always been super wonderful and everyone always talks about how wonderful it is to make friends online and then sometimes it just is not wonderful. A little backstory of how the day in question came into play. I was recognized by this person in public in my town. Um, they took a photo with me, they said they loved my social media, um, and then later they DM'd me on Instagram. I followed them back, but I didn't interact with them for a while after that interaction. I want to cut into this video and say that this video is sponsored by my Patreon. Yes, I recently made a Patreon where I want to discuss all things Fujoshi, BL, anime, manga, fanfic, fan art, and I want you to be able to join it, so I only have one tier on my Patreon. I have a $5 tier. You can join the chat and go over to my Patreon. Every single thing I post is accessible for that $5 tier. I want this to be a place where we can connect without any of the haters or the mobs. If you follow me on Instagram, you know you know, will attack us and uh, hate on us for our views and our our, our ships and our, our nerd tendencies. So if that sounds like something you want, then there will be a link in the description for you to join my Patreon. No pressure, but if you do want to support me monetarily, this is just a wonderful way to ensure that I can keep making content on all of my social media, but particularly on YouTube, and keep the quality up to where I'm trying to keep it at. And yeah, so thank you for checking out my Patreon if you do, and back to the story time. Uh, and then obviously because I followed them, their like story posts and their posts were just coming up in my feed and I noticed that we had uh, some similar interests in common. So they had already DM'd me, um, but it was not in my like primary or general folder. Like I had seen that they had sent me a couple DMs, but I had not responded at the that point yet but then I decided to reach out because I saw that we had like things in common and honestly we were really good friends like they were a really chill person um obviously you know there were some uh, interesting things that happened like they seemed to like romanticize the idea of me being an influencer like a little too much honestly I can't be mad about that a lot of people that have never had a following online or if anyone has like a following more than they have there's always this like ooh ah about it or whatever but I was just like bro I'm literally a normal person it's whatever <laughs> but basically yeah that is how I met this person um they had known me through my social media far before I ever knew of them that is like kind of an important uh part is that they were very much aware of my social media and very much aware of like the content I make and how I make content and stuff like that. Oh, we met in 2022, early 2022. So fast forward to 2023, early 2023. I have throughout our friendship featured this person on my social media multiple times, whether it be in my Instagram story or on YouTube videos on my channel. There was a situation that ended up where a lot of content was filmed where this individual was either in the background or directly in a selfie or a photo or just generally they were in the content that I had filmed. And I already know that they were sort of going through like a slightly chaotic time uh, at, at this time, but like we were still chill, we were friends, like I didn't think there was anything wrong um, at this point point. So after this event where I filmed a lot of content uh, where this person was present, obviously in the weeks following, I start posting said filmed content on my social media. They were very much aware when I was filming everything and taking photos and all of this that it was going to be for my public social media. They also had the intention to film content uh, while we were doing this, but they ended up not filming anything. Um, I still obviously filmed content and um, would literally like they would interact with the camera, they would talk to the camera, they very much knew that they were on camera to be posted on my social media. I wasn't like secretly recording anything or took a bunch of pictures behind their back like this was 
filmed with their consent. All of the content, the reels, the YouTube videos, all of it. So I had not really talked to them in a couple days. Um, that wasn't absolutely like a crazy occurrence. Like it's not like we spoke every single day, but I had not talked to them in a couple days and I had had a viral reel um, a couple weeks prior. It got around 12 million views. So my social media sort of popped off a little bit. Um, it was unexpected for anyone who knew me. I, I didn't think I was ever gonna become like a uh, kind of like, you know, a thing on Instagram reels. I didn't mean to. I just was reposting my TikToks on there because I'm like, I might as well um, do it on every single platform, try to monetize my content the best that I can. Um, and I posted uh, some stuff and obviously everything that I was posting was getting a lot more views to this day. I'm not sure if that is the cause of why this whole situation happened, um, but it's possible that the content getting more views than any of my content had ever gotten before might have spooked this person who has never had any social media following ever before. I'm still not sure and I probably will never know this. So we'll set the scene as I wake up that morning, I post some reels and I post a reel, I post a photo carousel on my Instagram and I go to do DoorDash and Instacart with my sister. It is a weekend. We only do it on the weekend and that is important because the person who committed this crime um, works a typical nine to five every day during the weekday job. So I'm riding in the car with my sister and I'm just looking at my Instagram because I, I was looking at my Instagram pretty much constantly at that point because I was getting the most engagement that I had ever gotten in my entire life. So I was constantly reading through comments. Um, so I'm on my page and I start to see posts disappearing. I'd refresh and it was gone. Um, at this time, I didn't know that when you delete posts, you could technically restore them from your recently deleted. I had no idea that that exists. I didn't learn about that until recently, which I, I it sucks because the, the 12 million view reel was deleted. One of my, multiple of my big hitters were deleted and every single piece of content that they could get to before. Sorry, my camera battery died. <laughs> um, but the time I didn't realize when I noticed the post disappearing that they were specifically posts that had this person in them, I just started freaking out because I was like, oh my God, my Instagram account was hacked. So obviously I'm in the car, I'm, I'm not driving obviously, um, but I'm looking at my phone and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like I'm telling my sister this the whole time. I'm like, I think my Instagram is being hacked right now. Like I think I'm literally seeing my Instagram being hacked, which my Instagram has been hacked before in the past, before I took security measures so that that wouldn't happen. Instantly I go into like my security settings and I go into like recent logged in devices. Cause I'm like, okay, if someone hacked my Instagram account, it's gonna say like, oh, your Instagram account has been logged in in Portland, Oregon at 273. Um, that was not the case. I looked in there and I, I don't really look in this section too often because I have alerts set up for if someone logged into my Instagram, um, which I didn't get, but obviously I was panic at the, at the time. I was panic at the time. So I didn't even think to like, think that I would have gotten an alert that my Instagram was logged in from a non-trusted device. But I go in there and I'm like, huh, I only see my computer and my iPad. And the iPad said basically currently active, that my Instagram account was currently active on my iPad, but I thought that that just meant that my Instagram was logged in on my iPad, cause it was. Um, so I'm like, okay, whatever, I'm just gonna change my password and click the log out of all devices. So I did that and the content was gone, but they didn't change my username. They didn't do any like permanent damage to my account. I was kind of like, oh, well, at least I was looking and I caught it before anything bad happened. Thank God. Um, it's probably just because I recently blew up on Instagram reels and uh, you know, whatever. I'm, more people were seeing my account. It's whatever. An important part of this that I have not, that I didn't mention was before I had left to do Instacart with my sister that day, I had posted on my Instagram story that I was finally getting around to editing the vlog from the event um, that has this person in it. And I posted that on my story with like a little clip of my computer with like my whole editing thing on it and it's whatever. This person knows that I put all of my footage onto an external hard drive. Um, they've seen me 
literally take my memory card out of my camera and load it all onto this hard drive and that I edit off of the hard drive because at this time I still had a 2016 MacBook Pro that literally could not handle me editing like so much HD like vlog footage. Um, but they don't really, they did, this person wasn't really like technologically savvy. So I come home on the day that my, I had that experience with my Instagram in the car and I come into my house and my front doors, I keep them both locked. I, I come in the house and my dog does not immediately run to me and greet me at the door. And I'm like, okay, that's really weird. Like, what's going on? My dog, if you don't know, he's paralyzed. So I was like, is Bobby not doing good? Is he not feeling good? Um, and he's fine. Um, I go into my room and he's hiding under the bed, which is unusual. He's not usually like that. So I'm like, interesting, weird. I coax him out. And um, oh, an important thing is to note that I had put a fresh blanket on my bed that morning, a fresh white duvet that I had cleaned at the laundromat like a day or two prior. I, I fluffed it out over my bed. Um, and yeah, it, it was so that the photo that I took of my computer while editing on my Instagram story was clean looking and not gross with my ugly old duvet that I had on previously. And I, you know, I grab Buddy and I put him on the bed and I'm sitting there and I go to grab my computer. And I noticed that my hard drive that I had wrapped up and put on top of my computer is not there. Cause I was immediately gonna start editing. Like all day I was like, I was like, oh, I wanna go home and I wanna finish editing um, the vlog from this event. And so I'm like, this, this whole time I'm sending my sister Snapchats. I'm being like, oh my God, I like can't find my hard drive. Like I literally don't know like what I did with it. Like I'm so dumb. Um, and I'm looking all around my entire house and like I'm doing that thing where I like scan the room. I'm like, where could I put it? And it's at this time when I am looking at my bed that flat in the middle of my white bedspread, there is a large, dirty shoe mark. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, I don't want to believe like what I now know, but I'm like, what the heck? Um, so I'm like, that's really weird. Um, and I don't really know what to do for a while with that information. I continue looking for my hard drive because I'm, I'm on a mission to find my hard drive. And I end up like calling my mom and like mentioning the, the footprint. And obviously she's very freaked out by this, but like at this point, I'm still just like, I don't know what's going on, but I really need to find this hard drive because it has really important footage on it. I end up taking Buddy outside. Um, and that is when I see that the screen on my window is completely bent and like not the way that it should be. Just came outside with Buddy. And my screen. Was it? Oh, I don't think it was always like that. That was not always like that. Oh. Oh. That was not even on there. Um, my house is old and my window has had the landlord special. So the lock on it previously, it now locks up, but before it did not lock. This window could be easily opened from the inside, from the outside. It was just completely a loosey goosey window. That's why I had a good screen on it because I did not want bugs getting in. It was not a very sealed window. The screen was fully bent up in the corner as if someone who doesn't know how to remove a window screen removed it and then it was half put back on. At this point, I am, I think someone broke into my house. I don't know that it is someone that I knew. I thought that this was just random. So I start going around. I like instantly come out here and I check under my desk to make sure my gaming PC is there. I look in my bin of cameras and I'm like, okay, all my cameras are there. I'm like, nothing was stolen. And then I'm like, except for my hard drive. And I was like, that is such a weird thing to steal. Like, why would someone just steal a hard drive? Like, like it's it, it was like a $200 hard drive from Amazon. Like, it was nothing worth any value. And I'm like going through my whole house and like trying to see if ever, anything was stolen. And that is when I see 
sitting on my stove. Okay, that is the creepiest thing ever that's ever happened to me in my entire life. Okay, I do not know why someone would do this. I have no idea. First of all, yeah, that's open now that I see that. I... What the heck? Okay, how do I even explain what I just did? I walked into my kitchen and I was going to turn off the light to go to bed and I was like, who put that on the stove? I don't put anything on my stove. I know that my stove's not hot anymore, but like, this is a random garbage bag. Nothing else is in this garbage bag. And I I unreal it because I'm like, what is this? Like, maybe I can reuse it. My hard drive is unplugged from its cord. And it's in this garbage bag. I did not put this here. I didn't even go in. Which, I live in an old house and my stove has a constantly lit pilot light on the stove, which means there is a live flame just under the metal surface of my really old stove. And I always explain this to my friends when they come over that you cannot set anything on the stove. Don't set your phone down on there. Even if it's not on, don't set your purse. Never set a towel because it is hot. It's very hot and it can catch the place on fire. And on my stove, exactly above where my pilot light is, is my external hard drive wrapped up in a bag. Thankfully, uh, this person, because we had not been talking that much in the weeks following the event, did not know that my gas had been shut off at my house. So the pilot light was currently not lit. But to this person's knowledge, the pilot light was still lit and it was still extremely dangerous for you to put anything on it. Um, like I said, this person isn't very technologically savvy, so I don't know if they really knew how to go on to the hard drive and delete stuff off of it, so they decided to try and burn it. <laughs> I don't really know the logic behind this. I don't know why they wrapped it in a plastic bag. It was tightly wound in the plastic bag, like, like very tightly wound. Like I picked it up and did not know what it was until I unwound the bag. Um, so, at this point, I have started to look around my house for other things, and I noticed that some anime merch that I have that this person knew was very, very, very expensive and very, very dear to me had bleach poured all over it. It was a fabric thing, so that was completely ruined. Um, other things, it was toilet bowl cleaner, so they probably used my bathroom while they were here, saw the toilet bowl cleaner and just decided to pour it on various things, which still sucks to this day. That was the only thing besides my Instagram post that I wasn't able to fix was this very expensive, like over $200 uh, piece of uh, like rare uh, BL Junjo Romantica merch. So I, at that point, I'm like, okay, this is this person. I don't know why at this point, why it is this person. It's, it, it all pretty much clicks in my head then that they were on my Instagram, on my iPad, because I realized then that currently active means that someone was on my iPad using my Instagram and they knew my iPad passcode because I had had it with me when I was around them and we used to draw together so they could unlock my iPad, I could unlock their iPad. That's just like something normal that friends share. And I text them something along the lines of why the F were you on my Instagram? I don't want to flat out accuse them of breaking into my house because I'm still like there's a part of me that knows but there's still a part of me that's like this person came to my house and crawled through my window scared my dog half to death, hacked my Instagram account, and then tried to destroy my hard drive. Like, it just didn't feel like that was a thing that anyone that I knew would do. Um, and I, I just, the thing that cemented it in that, like, they, they didn't think their reply through or they wanted me to know. I still don't know because I have not talked to this person since, but they basically said, what do you mean I'm at my house? I am not on your Instagram. I am at my house. 
why would you need to be anywhere else to access my Instagram account? I, I sent other text messages basically just being like, that is so uncalled for, like, what is wrong with you? Like, like they tried to deny everything, but like that was enough proof for me. And also the fact that they never, ever have tried to speak to me ever again after I called them out for what they did um, is proof enough in the pudding. <laughs> Is there, is there maybe a universe where, is there maybe a, another alternative that I have not even thought of where this was not them, where this was all just a really big coincidence? Uh, I guess maybe. I, I genuinely feel like the fact that they worded it with like, I'm not home, I'm not, I'm not on your Instagram, I'm at home, is proof enough that they knew in their head that they were on my Instagram when they weren't home because they were in my home when I was not here. So I was really, the aftermath of this whole thing is pretty anticlimactic. I was pretty freaked out, obviously. I like uh, wanted to move, but then I decided that it's not worth it. I obviously was like very distressed. Um, I don't know, from through the grapevine, I found out that this person was going through sort of like a manic episode during this whole thing so that is what I have used to rationalize why they did this they were not in their right mind um they didn't hurt my dog and they didn't destroy my place so I really can't be that mad out of all the things and, and the footage was fine the the hard drive did not um get harmed in any way so I did just, you know, cut them out of all the footage, archive all the posts that they were in, and, you know, uh, dealt with it that way. But yeah, that's just the story time of how I befriended someone who followed me on social media, and it ended up not being a very good thing. <laughs> so yeah, that is it for this video. I don't have a lot of crazy things happen to me in my life anymore, so I haven't done a story time in a really long time. But I know that a lot of people initially followed me for my story times back in the day when I was in high school. So I hope that this video was nostalgic for you, but I also hope that I don't have another opportunity to make a crazy story time come up anytime soon because I prefer my life to be very quiet and chill in, in my elder age. <laughs> I don't need any of this crazy drama happening. Um, but yeah, if this is your first time to my channel, hi, my name is Sunny Sheree. I make content around anime, manga, Japan travel, and general otaku related things. On my other social medias, I focus on content around BL and Fujoshi activities, BL being boys love manga. If that sounds like something you are interested in, all of my socials are linked in the description and the subscribe button is down there. Go ahead and click it. I also post slice of life vlogs on this channel frequently. I like to just document my life. I live a very normal life. I'm not some fancy LA influencer. I live in a 300 square foot historic casita. I don't live a lavish life. I live a very normal life and I like to record it and share it in a clean, fun, cozy, packaged way for you all to enjoy leisurely while you're cleaning your room, while you're doing homework, while you're studying, that kind of thing. I invite you to body double with me while you're cleaning your room and if you do, please tell me because that will bring me so much joy. <laughs> Once again, I will draw back to the sponsor of this video, my own Patreon. Please check that out if you do want to support me that way. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.